God said he hates those who shed innocent blood. If we go into our voting boxes and we reverse the idea that shedding the blood of an innocent child is okay and legal, you will experience the hand of God lifting off of the cities. Issues that you see on the nightly news appear to be political issues, but it's more of a spiritual problem with two ideas that are battling. If you want the country to go through a reprieve of God helping us, you better get up and vote. Here to reveal the prophetic significance behind this transition and our nation's hope going forward, let's welcome our friend, Evangelist Perry Stone. Come on, Perry. Hey, hey, hey. Doug. It's so good to see hey, you, man. How are good you? Good to see you again. Good to see you. I, I would normally say my old friend, but we don't use that term. <laughs> my long-term friend. And yes. Doug, it's yeah. so good to see you. Good We're with you with heart, with the world. We're excited to be here. I just want you to know that. Well, we're glad you're here because um, you have a lot of interesting books out there. And this one especially that you wrote in 2021. <laughs> and to think that you actually predicted this, I would say prophetically, uh, it's amazing that we actually saw this come to pass. Talk about the kind of the significance of that transition. I did not know I had written this. I'm telling, I'm telling you honestly till 2024. It was written in 2021. And my office came to me and said, do you know you have a prediction about Harris replacing Biden? And, th and this is not long. Can I just read this so that people mm -hmm, yeah. know what we're talking about? Um, it's no secret that many public and private discussions have ensued concerning the physical health of Joe Biden. This is the first time since... Branham's prophetic word, we can talk about that in a moment. In 1933, now this man predicted there'd be a woman mm -hmm. president at the end, time of the end, that there's a possibility that the vice president a woman could be sworn in as president of the United States. Between now and the end of 2024, due to Biden's health or other types of political issues, time will tell if this is the moment of fulfillment. If Biden passes steps aside or, if, uh, or somehow removed with the way the political system is run, not only would Harris replace him, she would likely be tapped to run for president in 2024. Wow. That was mm -hmm. 2021. And no one was talking about this, mm -hmm. not even, mm -hmm. in, you know, not even close. Well, you know, I'm, I was talking about... Now, it doesn't mean she's going to win. I'm not saying that. Right, right. But it means that she's going to, it was, she's well, going to run what she is running. So. Well, and we know they would have rather Biden have been able to stay in. Yes, you know, that's true. Because... Um, but he just couldn't with, you know, his current health condition. But um, I, I was talking to the producers about a show I did with Lila Rose. And what, what, what year was that that we did this? 2021. 2021? 2021. So um, I, I don't know if you know this or not, Perry. I did a show with Lila Rose, and she's a very uh, outspoken uh, speaker and leader in the pro-life movement. Mm -hmm. She's very articulate. Do you remember... In California, when there was a documentary done where uh, some of the pro-life people went undercover and they actually captured on film doctors making deals for the body parts. I do remember that. Of was that her aborted that headed that up? Babies. Yeah, so, I remember that. So Lila is a, it knows the team that was doing that okay. in California. Right. So anyway, I, this is going to tie into to Harris, but let's just watch a little bit of actually what happened. They caught these doctors doing this, which was illegal. Um, but here's just a little clip of these, these doctors bargaining and making a deal for the body parts of aborted babies. I want to be really clear. The allegation that Planned Parenthood profits in any way from tissue donation is not true. What would you expect for intact um, tissue? What, what sort of compensation? What sort of... Well, why don't you start by telling me what you used to pay? Okay. I don't think so. I, I'd like to... I would like to know what would make you happy? What would work for you? Well, you know in negotiations, a person who throws up the figure first is at a loss, right? So, okay. <laughs> Tell me what you really... $75 a specimen. Oh, that's way too low. So I'd like to start at around 100 Okay. 
Now, this is for tissue that you actually take, not just the tissue that the person volunteered that you can't find anything. Right? Exactly. And are we agreed that $100 would keep you happy? Well, let me agree to find out from other affiliates yes. in California what they're getting. And mm -hmm. they're getting substantially more than we could discuss it today. Yes. But yeah, yeah. No, the money is not the important thing. No, but no. But it has to be big enough that it's worthwhile. But, it, but it is something to talk about. I mean, it's the one of the first things that you brought up, right? So. If this is in the ballpark, then that's fine. If it's low, still low, then we can talk about it. You would. What you would do? I want a Lamborghini. What? I said I want a Lamborghini. <laughs> 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 Don't we all, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. If we were doing like, you know, 50 to 75 per specimen, that would be like 200 or 300, right? Then we'd be comfortable with that. But like, so it's like stuff like this, like we don't want to be like just a flat fee of like 200 and then, you know, it's like. <laughs> no, and yeah, the. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think the I think the per item thing works a little better just because we can see how much we can get out of it. All right, so that was just part of it. You could actually walk, go to on demand and watch the whole show, but we um, actually you're talking about uh, you know the heart, the lungs. I mean, different tissue uh, that that would be intact uh, even after the abortion, and they they sell those parts. But this is the thing: um, uh, Kamala Harris was the uh, Attorney General in the state of California, and instead of prosecuting the people who were doing this illegally, she prosecuted the people that uncovered it. Unbelievable. And so here's a uh, an article: Kamala Harris accused of weaponizing California's AG's office for mega sponsor Planned Parenthood. There's such lies and deception behind Planned Parenthood. Number one, it's not about women's health care. It's about how many abortions they can do and how much money they can make and now selling those baby parts, which is still going on. But she was a part of that. And, that, and that's the part, the hidden part, that people don't know about this woman that is so demonic. I want to say something to the American people, that God said he hates those who shed innocent blood. It's one of the seven sins in Proverbs. I hate those that shed innocent blood. Number two. If you will go to the five books of Moses, if an innocent man was found dead out near your, near your city, you had to measure if he was closest to your city. You had to go through an actual ritual to cleanse yourself and say, we did not kill this man because God hated shedding innocent blood so much that he cursed the city if innocent blood was shed. When Cain killed Abel, the voice of Abel's blood cried up to God from the ground. And... In Matthew chapter 23, the reason the city of Jerusalem was annihilated, if you'll go back and read it, is Jesus said, you shed the blood of the prophets from Zechariah, whom you slew between the porch and the altar to the prophets today. And he said, upon you shall come the judgment, and it will happen within one generation. And I want you to, I want you to remember this. Johnny, just remember this moment. Mark it down. If we go and into our voting boxes and we reverse the idea that shedding the blood of an innocent child is okay and legal, you, are, you will experience the hand of God lifting off of the cities in the United States, and you will experience four major types of disasters. And the, the unsaved will have no clue what's happening. The unsaved will call it global warming, or they, they'll say it's some kind of a, a natural phenomena. But those who know Scripture and those who know what the Scripture teaches about the shedding of innocent blood and the laws that were established, you know, when Pilate washed his hands, that's the procedure of the Old Testament law of an innocent person being killed. That's the procedure. You had to wash your hands over a heifer that was slain to declare yourself innocent, to free your town of the judgment. That's in the Bible. And so... There was something called Moloch worship in the Old Testament, where it was an idol god. It was a bull from the waist up, human from the waist down, sitting on a pedestal with an open belly. And they would put wood and tar and a burning substance in the belly to heat it up. Then it would take the firstborn sons, and they would pass it between the hands of Moloch. And God was so against it. I just read this the other day that four scriptures said that God will severely judge the people and the cities 
if they allow Moloch worship to go on. So it's the same, the same spirit that was in ancient Israel is the spirit being released right now in the United States with this issue. And uh, I, just, I just want to say, listen to me very carefully. This is very, very serious with the Lord because a, the spirit, the, here's the whole question. When does the child or the fetus, infant, child, use whatever term you want, when does the eternal spirit get into that baby? Some say at six months, some say at birth, some say when the umbilical cord is cut. No, no, no. The moment of conception, the soul and spirit are the breath. The, first of all, the soul, man became a living soul when God breathed. So when God breathes on that conception, and I, and, and I had a nurse in town tell me, they said, I, she, she told me this years ago, this kind of blew my mind. She said, it, it was just reported in a medical journal that when you take the egg and the sperm, and it, it actually takes, I don't know if that's, there's a, a burst it ignites, of light. It ignites. There's, there's a actually burst, video. Yeah, there's I a burst if, of light. I don't know if our people can find that. I have seen that actual. And, and that's life. That's life no, right that, there. That's it an, begins that's, there. No, that's an eternal soul. It's let, eternal let me share soul, this, exactly. Um, Perry, because I know, and I will we'll move past it because there's other things we need to talk about, but this was just written in August of, of 2024, U.S. News. Kamala Harris stands accused of weaponizing the California Attorney General's office against a pro-life activist who alleges he was exposing the illegal sale of aborted fetuses. David Daladin, we need to pray for him, whose nine-year legal saga instigated, instigated by Harris is still ongoing. He released shocking undercover videos he took of Planned Parenthood executives discussing fees and prices for fetal tissues in July of 2000. 15. He now faces eight felony charges and jail time for making the videos without getting the executive's permission to film them. The, his lawyers say it's one of the first times California AG's office has ever undertaken a standalone prosecution involving the state's video recording law. Yeah, but, yeah but yet the left will record people that are conservative and publicize it about all yeah. sorts of things and, and never is, get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So Nothing's I mean, that, ever said. that just, I mean, again, that's something you're, you're not hearing anyone talk about no. that she is tied to. The other thing that um, we just got information on, I don't know if you know this or not, that there are 10 states on this election that are facing ballot initiatives, which are proposing state constitutional amendments to allow full-term abortions, transgender surgeries, hormone treatments, and puberty blockers to minors without parent consent mm. or notification. This is funded by George Soros, and these are the 10 states. In New York, uh, Prop 1 is hidden in there. In Missouri Amendment, it's Amendment, or in the Missouri, it's Amendment 3. In Arizona, it's Prop 139. In Florida, it's Amendment 4. In Nebraska, it's Initiative 439. In Colorado, it's Amendment 79. In South Dakota, it's Amendment G. And in Montana, it's Initiative 128. And Maryland, it's Question 1. Nevada, it's Question 6. Those are the 10 states that are facing Soros-funded ballot initiative. These are all paid for by dark money to change red state constitutions to allow full-term abortions and again transitioning minors without parental consent. That's on the ballot. Well, it's on the this ballot to get people out voting. Right. To, right, get, the, right. to get the extremists the out, to yeah. motivate the activists to get their, all their, their people together and to show up to vote. But I want, you to, I want you to think about this. I was thinking the other day when Sinwar, who was the head mm -hmm. terrorist of Hamas military branch, that when he was shot in the head and he went into eternity, whether you believe it or not, if you're watching me, you, you say, well, I don't believe that. It doesn't matter if you don't believe it. It's still true. There's a heaven where God dwells, where righteous people go at death. They go to paradise. Second Corinthians chapter 12 tells that. But there's hell. It's underneath the earth. There are probably six to seven different chambers. Tartarus is a word used in the Greek in 2 Peter 2, 4 for hell, which is where the fallen angels are confined in chains. The Bible speaks a lot about this, a lot more than people know. But I thought when that terrorist who'd murdered people, and I don't know if I told you this when I was here last time, I just found this out. He had six hostages in the bunker with him. And he said, I heard the IDF has pulled out. I want to come out of the bunker. He said, kill all of them. 
and they shot all six of those hostages before he came out. Mm. They shot him in the head, and his, I got pictures, his head was blown off. Yeah. He's, you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Right. That's what Jesus said. But here's what I want to say. For you who, pardon me just a minute, I've got to get this out of my spirit. I hear people say, well, I am, I believe the word of the Lord and I believe the word of God, but everybody has an opinion. God is really clear on shedding innocent blood. Yes. Both Testaments. Yes. He's 100% clear. If you want to curse the entire United States, and when I say curse, what does that mean? Does God just so, so, start saying curse words? That's not what that means. The word curse in Hebrew means to make small and little and to reduce. If you want to get our economy so messed up that nobody wants to buy our stuff, if you want to get the cities so violent that you won't even be able to go on the street after sunrise like Lot did in Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis 19, if you want to mess the country up, then you vote, you vote to let them abort these children. Because I'm telling you, after a while, God himself will say, I've had it and enough is enough. And you say, well, you know, Perry, I just don't believe that. I believe God is full of grace and God is full of mercy and I believe this, this, and this. I'm telling you right now that the one sin that Israel committed, and he committed it under a lot of these wicked kings, and it eventually led to the Babylonians coming in and destroying the city and burning it to the ground, was the shedding of the blood of the prophets, the shedding of the blood of Zechariah the priest, and the shedding of innocence. Moloch worship was so cursed by the Lord that Jerusalem itself came under a severe disfavor of God. Can I tell you something? You do not want to anger the Lord. And these are the type of things in America, you know what I call it, legalizing abominations, passing laws that God considers abominable. And I'm going to say what Billy Graham said years ago, that America's headed in a direction that if he allows us to get by with the very things that have cursed nations and destroyed empires, if he lets us get by with it, he will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment. Yet it says in the Bible that the men of Sodom will testify against the people of Jesus' day because they had the knowledge and they didn't listen to it. That's in your Bible as well. Jesus warned that. The men of Sodom will rise up against Capernaum, Bethsaida, and Magdala, and those cities, those four cities, because you had the truth, you saw the miracles, and you refused to walk in it. Now, folks, listen, this is a serious thing. This is about not just now. This is about eternal judgment. Everybody watching me, including that woman that wanted to take money for body parts, you wait, you just wait till the great white throne judgment when millions of infants, because their spirit goes to God and matures to a sin point, when they are at the white throne judgment, pointing their finger at you, doctor, and you, nurse, and you, Planned Parenthood, saying, you murdered me. You never gave me a chance to live because you took me and made money out of me by murdering me. Now, that's a firm word, but you, you'll remember this preacher, the great white throne judgment. If you don't repent and you don't get right with God, you're going to remember this white-haired Tennessee preacher. My face will come up before you in eternity after the 1,000-year reign of Christ when that judgment takes place. You better get your act together. Church, listen. Listen. In 2020, because of COVID, a lot of, a lot of people said it was because of COVID. 25 million Christians didn't even show up to the polls because they didn't want to get out in public and they didn't want to go to the process of getting about. You better, if you believe what we're preaching, and if you stand for infants living, and if you want to stand for the, the, what marriage is based on Genesis 3, if you want, to do, if you want, to, if you want the country to go through a reprieve of God helping us, you better get up off your That's couch right. and get out there, there, there and, and just vote. Well, That's you know, all I'm going to say I want to just I want on to jump that, in on that because line. I know this is also your heart. Uh, oh, my okay. goodness. So yeah. I want to jump in because I know truth and grace is what we're about. And there's millions of Christian women who've had abortions. We're not mad at you. Right. And God's not mad at you. He forgave you the moment you ask, and he loves you with all his heart. And there's healing from abortion. That's not what we're trying to say. We're trying to say that, you know, that we need to be active in our culture so our culture doesn't go to hell. And that's the church's responsibility. So if you've heard anything, we love you. No one's mad at you. We forgive you. You're forgiven. If you need healing, we've got a great product on the website called Grace After Abortion. You deserve to heal. And so does America. America deserves to heal from her immorality and the things that we've done that are wicked in the sight of the Lord. 
And you'll and you know I've interviewed so many women that had abortions and they they suffered tremendously for years and yeah. they talk about how God healed their heart because it was such an unnatural thing to pull that baby from their body, and um, but God's healed them, restored them, and they've actually named those children because like you said, mm -hmm. you you can't kill a baby. You can take a baby out of time. We're in time. Mm -hmm. But you can't kill an eternal soul. Can't kill soul. the spirit, right? You can't spirit kill an lives eternal on. soul. So well, the mother will, will also see, you will see, see the that baby, baby again. again. Yeah, and that's what. And, and then, and because of the grace of God, in in that person's life, that will not be the issue right. once they've repented, right? And and realize what they've done. And that, we're talking, then God is able to heal them, and real. And that's that, but, that's but so we're true. really talking to a group of people. But and Doug, you say this every day of Christians that aren't voting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that have. They to me, that's that's an abortion. That's worse. You know, yeah. to me, if yeah. you <laughs> abort your right to vote, that's an abortion. Yeah. Because yeah. you have the, God's given you the responsibility for your culture, for your city, for your governor, for your president, giving you the responsibility. I, I tell us again, this is the church's election. Yes. This is our responsibility. It is not politics that will protect our nation. Okay. It's Jesus. We've only got a few minutes. We've got to talk about your book. And I, <laughs> I wanted you to get to... Um, the, the comparisons between King Nebuchadnezzar and President Trump. You well, talk after, about after that in the book. After we about, in one chapter, we talked about the situation where Harris would run. This was 2021. I kept asking, why didn't Donald Trump win? I said, what was the issue? And the Lord really took me back to the book of Daniel. And he said, King Nebuchadnezzar, and he showed me, he said he built a tower, you had Trump mm -hmm. Tower. Mm -hmm. And he starts going, greatest army in the world. America had the greatest army. He gave me the parallels mm -hmm. of this great king of Babylon and Trump. And, 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 and Nebuchadnezzar and was also uh, in building the empire. He was an expert on money and economics, yes. and a master of international Total. trade. Total. Yeah. To it just, he was a Trump. But what happened to him is he got a little arrogant. You know, he, he was always saying, I built this and I did this and I did that. So God removed him. And God removed him. Actually, the, the story is he cut mm. the tree down, but he left the stump in the earth. He left the stump. And the angel said, I'm going to pass around it seven times, and I'm going to then restore it. And then he actually left the kingdom. This is a long story made short. But he was brought back into the king, and he sat back on the throne after seven times of an angel passing over. So I'm, I'm thinking about all this. And so, the Lord, so he eventually repented. He repented, and he was restored back to the kingdom after seven times. Okay, two things about that. Number one, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Donald Trump had too much pride. And I allowed this to happen to humble him. And I'm just telling you what he told me. Now, some people will fuss at me about that. I'm talking about previously. I'm talking about previously in 2020. But there are seven things that have happened to him total. And there's the seven times of passing over. And if this parallel fits, then he stands. Let me say this way. If you give me patterns, because you know I'm a pattern preacher. Cycles, history, and patterns. History repeats itself. But if you give me the patterns of Harrison, the patterns of Trump, Trump has more patterns that imply that he would win this. And I'm just talking patterns here. Uh, one of the things, too, now this is hilarious. When, when Grover Cleveland was president for four years, he lost for four years to somebody named Benjamin Harrison. Four years. Harrison was in. Harrison ran again, but Grover Cleveland came back and beat him. Grover Cleveland was from New York. He was a Presbyterian. His wife was much younger than he was. He was a businessman. <laughs> He's the parallels of Trump. And watch, who's Trump running against? Harris. Yeah. Not Harris' son, Harris. Now, these, these are what I call historical parallels or patterns that if things go the way a pattern can go, and I'm very careful here. I don't, I don't want to step mm -hmm. out and make predictions. Mm -hmm. This is going to happen. That's going to... It, you only know if the pattern is accurate historically, if the pattern is repeating itself, if it happens. But you know, um, so that's I think that's interesting. Doug, you say that it's really in the hands of the church right mm -hmm. now, and the 20, 30 million that didn't vote. The culture is always in the hands of the church. Yeah. When in the Book of Revelations, the, the, uh, the Apostle John didn't write to the governors of the city. Yeah. He wrote to the church. He wrote to the pastors too. Of the city. He wrote to the pastors. Because it's straight, the pastor's responsibility for yeah. the city. It's true. You know, yeah. pastors don't own their cities. They don't make their people and train them for school boards and train them to go do the polls yeah. and train them to do stuff. But it's our responsibility as a church for the we're responsible for our culture. Yeah. The church will be held responsible for the decline yeah. of America, not the politicians. Yeah. It's so true. So uh, how important is it? 
because at the end of the day, our hope and trust isn't in a politician. Right. True, so true. I mean, God is the only one that can turn the hearts of men, and that's what we're believing yeah. for. But we have to also understand that for the right to continue to do what we do and have the freedom that we have to, you know, show uncensored information, to preach the gospel around the world, that we take a, a we take a really um, serious blow of that being inhibited or taken away mm -hmm. with the wrong leadership. There's, in. Two, there's two things that the, in the Old Testament. There's the blessing and the birthright. The blessing comes from God, but the birthright is something that is, well, it, it, it's going to get complicated if I try to explain it, so let me, let me explain it this way. The United States blessing and birthright is freedom. They came to here, the pilgrims and those came here for religious freedom. Mm -hmm. right. You don't hear that in history, but the Church of England was controlling everything. They didn't want that. They didn't want the church controlling the government. They wanted to have freedom, mm -hmm. okay? So they came over here for religious freedom. We have freedom of speech. We have freedom to bear arms. We have freedom to assemble. All this is a part of our birthright. Our founders gave us a blessing and a birthright. Now, the birthright is freedom, but the blessing can only come from God. And the only way that we as a people can continue in the great blessings of God, and this is economically, this is agriculturally, because, you know, even in Malachi, when Israel began to focus on themselves and away from God, God said, I control the rain. He says, God said, don't you understand if you'll just do what I tell you, put me first, put my house first and follow my law, I'll give you rain in due season. I mean, the vats will overflow, but he says, if you don't, I can withhold the rain. And that's the whole, that's the whole Malachi chapter 3 and chapter 4. So what we have to understand is we are now in a battle for our freedom. And I know people say it can't happen here, but if you will talk to people from Romania and Russia, um, Cuba, that came up under communism, they will say to you that when they start talking about, uh, I've got to say this, the other day there was a rally and Ms. Harris was in the rally, and a, a, it was a Christian young man. No, we showed that. Yeah. Showed clip and then, we actually and interviewed, says, the, we interviewed the young man yesterday. Did you? Mm -hmm. Live. So the, the guy show. says, Jesus is Lord, and instead of her saying, amen, brother, I mean, you know, she claims to be whatever, yeah. she says, well, you're in the wrong rally. Now, every Christian should pay attention to that. Right. Pay attention to what's being said. Don't pay attention to the propaganda. Well, and just like pay attention, that's coming from her heart. Well, and just like, but it's the heart's Just like we were just talking about it's this whole crazy. thing with the Planned Parenthood and how she protected them and went after the people that exposed. Okay, we found that clip. We have to show you. This is at an actual video of the moment of conception when an egg and a sperm meet. What happens? Let's watch video is under a special microscope and showing the moment of conception the very moment that the sperm enters the egg there is a flash of light and the light has entered the world and god said let there be light and there was light in him was life and the life was the light of men the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Amen. Oh my, I have well, never seen that. That's so miraculous. Oh my goodness, Doug. Yes. <laughs> that's blowing me away. Boom. That's, that's scientific medical right yes. there. That's not, that is actually the moment. That's what this nurse told me. Mm -hmm. She said, you know, the soul and, man, I'm going to run around this place. Excuse me. I'm going to get up and run. You're going to show that. I'm you're going to show that on your show. But you know, you know what? I will. Yeah. Because people need to see that. Yeah. This is not a, just a, a blob of flesh that grows. This is a life, body, soul, spirit. That's what I remember oh Lester, Lester Summerall Jesus. said, uh, one of our That's greatest nice. evangelist prophetic voices yeah. is with the Lord. He said, God has given man the unique ability to create an eternal soul. And that's the difference, that's you know. It. But um, the eternal soul is going to go somewhere. It's going to go to heaven. That's right. Or you know, we, saw, we just saw the miracle of life. You know, but can you imagine what it looks like, Perry, when someone gives their heart to Christ <laughs> and the Holy Spirit enters them? And it's the same light. Bang. There's a light. There's a light, light that a goes light into that, you. The light bulb comes on. So many, things. so many. You might be watching right now and you might wow. be all over the map uh, where you are spiritually. Some of you are all in. You're serving the Lord. Some of you have walked away. Some of you, you don't even know this Jesus we're talking about. Let me explain. 
He loves you so much. He died on a cross for your mistakes. And he wants to spend eternity <laughs> with right. you. That's with right. With you. And he wants to spend time with you. And it's not hard. Just open your heart. Say a simple prayer, something like this. Say, Jesus, Jesus, forgive yes. me of my sin. Forgive me of my sins. My mistakes. My mistakes. You paid the cross for those. You paid the price for those. I accept you as Lord Thank of my you. life. I accept you as Lord Thank of my life. Thank you. Guide me. Guide me. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And that same light that you just saw, there's a light that now came into your spirit. And that Holy Spirit's going to light up your life. Now, we want to help you with that. We've got the Gospel of John. It's not an ordinary Gospel of John. It's got a QR code in it so you can understand the Word of God. And we also have a now, a now what um, little booklet so that you can understand what your next steps are. But call the phone number on your screen, 1-800-329-0029. The reason we do this every day all over the world is so you can come home to Jesus yes. and live eternity with Him. There is another eternal place. It's not where you want to be. That's right. Because He wants you with Him. So call the number That's on your screen right. and do that. You know, um, there were uh, several, we were talking before the program, uh, producers that were saying our audience really, a lot of them didn't understand uh, what Israel and its relationship to Palestine and Gaza and all of that. But could you give a little bit of history of sure. the, um, where I, I, did the Palestinians come from and where did it start? Because there's yeah. some, you know, they, this is their land. And we're gonna, okay, we're going to make this real quick. This is a real quick four minutes. Ready? Here we go. Let's go all the way back to the book of Genesis where Sh Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. They settled in three different areas. The descendants of Shem took much of the Middle East, which we would call today the area of Syria, Lebanon, Israel, etc. The name Israel comes from the name of Jacob. Jacob was the name given to him, uh, but God changed his name when he wrestled the angel of God and said, your name shall be called Israel. So Jacob's name in the book of Genesis, middle of the book of Genesis, now changes to Israel. His children, he had 12 sons and one daughter, they are called the children of Israel. As those 12 children, men, grew into 30,000 men, 40,000, 60,000 men, they became known as the tribes of Israel or the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes later came out of Egypt, came back to the promised land, which at that time was known as Canaan land, but later when they settled the land and they possessed the land the way God told them they would, they called themselves the nation of Israel. It remained the nation of Israel until the Assyrians came in, took 10 of the tribes captive. They're called the lost tribes, but two tribes, Benjamin and Judah remained. And that's the area of Jerusalem. They later, after the Babylonian captivity, when the Jews came back from Babylon, they became known as Jews. They were known as Hebrews, because Abraham, the father of the Jewish people, was called a Hebrew, but they later became called Jews because of Judea and the area of Judah. As you come forward in time, here's what you'll discover, that the name Israel existed all the way from Jacob in the book of Genesis, all the way to the time of the destruction of the temple in the year 70. When the Romans destroyed Jerusalem and burnt the temple down, they, they changed the name. The, the name was never changed before that. The name was changed to Philistia or Palestina, and that's where the name Palestine come from. So in other words, the name Palestine was not the name used anywhere in the Bible for the Jewish state or the Jewish tribes. It was always Israel, then it was Judea, Israel and Judea. Those are the two names that were always used. And we're talking about for a long time, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So basically here's what happened. After the Jews were scattered to the nations, the name Palestine would remained in the time of the Byzantine Empire, in the time of the Crusaders, in the time of the Muslims, etc. But then when Israel was reestablished as a nation, they took their name on May 14, 1948 to be Israel. There was a real discussion in the United States government about what the name of this new nation should be. So that's how the name Israel came into existence because it's not a new nation. See, a lot of people protesting Palestine versus Israel think it's just some new nation that started in 48. The Jews had the land way before 48, but they lost it in 70 AD at the destruction of the temple where the Jews were scattered. Then they were reestablished as a nation in 48. The, Jerusalem became the official capital in 1967. So it has been the nation of Israel ever since then. 
So let me just stop and say it this way, that the, the issues that you see on the nightly news appear to be political issues, but it's more of a spiritual problem with two ideas, two different religions, two different faiths that are battling for that land called Israel. And that will be what the book of Ezekiel 38 and 39, the war of Gog and Magog, that will be a lot of where the end time prophecies concerning the Messiah and the return of the Messiah and the wars that are going to happen will happen in that part of the world. Also, I wanted to say your understanding of where uh, Harris stands on Israel versus where Trump stands. Quickly, I I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. I think everybody knows where President Trump stands because he just says more or less, do what you need to do. Harris and Biden told them, do, get out of Gaza, do not go into that area where they killed the head man. If Israel would have listened, then Sinwar would still be living and start to rebuild in Hamas. Wow. And so they didn't listen. And let me just say something else. I found this out. The reason that Israel does not always tell the United States what they're doing is you just saw it. They released, somebody in the United States released the plans of how Israel was going to attack Iran. It came from mm. us. Yeah. somewhere over here. And that's why Israel says, why should we tell this administration anything? I'll be honest, I know for a fact, they don't trust this and administration. And that's under Biden's watch. That's under Biden and Harris's watch, wow. yes. And the so other that's, thing, just a, that's the fact, that's not me making quickly, up Quickly, um, someone just wrote in and said they have a neighbor that's registered Democrat and didn't think they could vote Republican. That's not true. No, you can be registered anything and vote how you want. Like right. independents can vote. Republican, Democrats can vote. You do not have to vote just because you're registered a certain okay. way. And you're voting biblical principles. You're not voting personalities. Well, that's so true. You know, you want to, I mean... If uh, we were, nobody would be president. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so we want to be, be careful you about know? that. Well, Perry, all these people called yes. in while we were uh, for prayer. Would you just pray over these? Father, thank you right now for the men and women that call because they have confidence in the prayer team and this ministry here at Daystar. And Lord, I just ask you to touch all the hearts of the people. Those precious women, God, that we talked about earlier that, that had to go through an abortion God, give them peace through Jesus and through the blood of Jesus. Those, Heavenly Father, that are confused about the times, give them peace, I pray. And help us, God, in this season, in the next couple of days, when this election comes, for the perfect will of God for this nation to be done. And help us to continue to be able to preach with freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.